Hi, I'm Paul Wynn. Welcome to Coast Connection. And tonight we have a great show for you. We are going to be talking about a brand new facility in Nanaimo called Eden Place. And here to discuss it with me is Robert Gross, who is a board member and also the chief fundraiser of the organization. And we have Denise, excuse me, Witowski, who is a, also a board member. And I don't know if you have a specific job with on the board or just as a general board? I'm a, I'm a new board member. So. Okay, so you're like... I'm, a, I'm working with Robert on fund development as okay. well. Okay. We're looking to delegate. Yeah. Oh, way to go, way to go. Hey, well, what I, what I want to do is get a, an idea of exactly what Eden Place is. Well, I've got to correct you. It's Eden Gardens. Gardens? Yeah. How did uh, I? We'll, we'll change oh, the name to Eden Gardens. We made all the signs that way, so you we're going to have to go. I, that I was way. avoiding that because I was thinking <laughs> of the Garden of Eden. No, no, you weren't going to say Eden. Okay, Eden Garden. Well, <laughs> most people will remember Nanaimo Travelers Lodge. <laughs> yes. Because yeah. we had been around for over 37 years, and they had expanded, but unfortunately, it got old and worn out, like a lot of people sometimes, and uh, we couldn't do any more renovations, so. About eight, year, nine years ago, we decided we're going to have to rebuild. We assembled the land on Northfield, put lots together, did the plans, and I joined eight years ago on the board for the imminent campaign, an imminent project. And it took eight years, and uh, it's 105,000 square feet. It's state-of-the-art design. It's uh, neighborhoods, small groups of 11 people living together, uh, make it a home-like setting. And uh, it's up and running. And on April 28th, we moved all 90 people from the Nanaimo Travelers Lodge, if you can imagine, in one day, over to Eden Gardens. And then over the next couple of months, added another 40 people. So we're now at full capacity of 130 people. And uh, everything's running smoothly as we head into the, the new, ph new philosophy how, and care. How did, how did the residents take the the shift, the, you know, from the travel lodge to the new facility? Well, it's never easy when you move. No, right. But the actual day of the move was extremely, surprisingly smooth. Um, families have a tougher time. <laughs> Staff sometimes has a tougher time because if you move, anytime you're into a new house or a new facility, it's laid out a little different, you do things differently. So it's been seven months now, and we've gone through that learning curve and uh, we're over most of the big bumps, and now we're smoothing out the, the little bumps. Yeah, hey, well, Denise, I wanted to know, what made you become a member of the board? Well, I started volunteering um, a few years ago, and I was, I was just doing some press releases. I, I have a friend who works there as a, a um, healthcare aide, yes. and she got me involved. And um, I just loved the warmth and the vitality and what they were doing. Um, the Eden philosophy is, it, it's, it's more than a nursing home. It's a place where people are very active. There is music, a lot of music and art and horticulture and the programs. And I just felt like it was an amazing place. You know, I've had, had relatives in nursing homes and, but, um, and then I, I got to meet people like Robert, and he just became more and more involved. And I really wanted to be, be make this um, make it more than just volunteering to, to be able to make a difference. Okay. Um, you know, I, I had the opportunity to go through the building when it was still under construction, and uh, one of the things that uh, sticks in my mind was the um, I guess it was a place where people could put photographs at the opening of the... Memory box. Yes, yeah. yeah. I thought that was quite... Well, uh, the memory boxes are all full now. Okay. And right next to the memory box, we went one step further, and uh, we've done little reminders. Uh, Simple Pleasures is the program. Okay. And it's a little plaque. And when you go to visit someone or a new staff member, or uh, you're going to see the neighbor next door, so to speak, in the neighborhood, yeah. you can see different things about that person before you go in. And uh, so you know something about them and you can engage them and staff will know something about them. So it's a simple little trick we've pioneered and a lot of other uh, homes are looking at that and using that tool. Yeah, I thought it was a great idea. I mean, for, I was thinking of myself, I'd say, at least I'd know where I lived. I could see my picture and go, yeah, I live in there because, you know, those are my family pictures yes. up there. Now, uh, now, how long has it, 
again, being in full operation? Well, April 28th, like it's I say, April we 20th, moved okay. for, of this year from uh, Animal Traveler's Lodge to Eden Gardens. Uh, so it's been about seven months. And that meant staffing up too, because when you ha have 40 more residents, I think we have about 45 more staff. And now it's all into, to say, neighborhoods, 12 neighborhoods of 11 people. So that's very different than your traditional institutional hallways with rooms running off. So it's a different way of setting up. And they do their own, uh, all the meals are brought in. They have their own entertainment area, their own quiet area, their own garden, or on the second floor, solarium. So it's, a, it's their world. Um, but they still can get together in multifunctional rooms and so on. Very different. Yeah, very. Well, why the, the, the break up into these 11 kind of family groups, I guess? I don't know. That's my expression. That's, that's an Eden philosophy that when people live together in, in more neighborhood, community like settings, and they get to know each other better, and, and, and um, you know, so they create their own communities, but then with, they're within a a larger like metropolis if you will um, so the metropolis then would be going out to the bistro or to the multi-purpose room so they're actually getting out right. of their community or their neighborhood and then and then also the um, the, the health care aides and the nurses get to bond and be, you know have a, a more close relationship with with the residents um, you know, see that now that that strikes me as being more than a housing facility. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're not just housing individuals. You're you're creating, uh, uh, as Denise just said, a community. It's like, oh well, I live in this neighborhood, but I can go over to that neighborhood because they've got a nice bistro, or this one's got a movie theater, or whatever. You Something know, like it's that, that kind well, of stuff. Each neighborhood <laughs> has an adjacent neighborhood. Okay. And they share an outdoor garden. And there's a wall that goes down, but we've opened up the gates, so now the neighborhoods get together in the, both the uh, inside and the, and the outside. So the garden is a, it's a wonderful neighborhood, just like your backyard. Yeah. I, like, I like that, I mean, the, the whole concept, because I remember I, I have the advantage of having, you know, being educated about it before when we, we did the previous show mm -hmm. on the facility being built. Um, now, I was trying to think of um, the, has, it, has the transformation been difficult for the residents from one, over the, you know, travel lodge to the new place? Well, well, not for the new ones, of course, because they yes. didn't know anything different, but yeah. um, it, it was a learning curve for everybody, for mm -hmm. the staff and, and for, for the mm -hmm. residents, because before they had more freedom to move into the common areas, whereas now the, the, the neighborhoods are a little bit more confined. So the, the, we had to go through um, a period of, of understanding what needed to be done. So certain residents now can get a code to get out into the, into the more common areas. And, um, I, it's, it's, and, and also because it was so new, there were no decorations on the walls or anything to make it feel like home. So since over time we've put quilts on the walls and pictures and, and things that have meaning to the residents and, and, and now their, their, their little neighborhoods feel like theirs. You know, they've helped decorate it. A lot of the artwork too help comes from people who have worked in the art programs and they've actually painted some of these pictures mm -hmm. and so now, it, it took six months, I think, to make it feel like home. And That's good, because I noticed that you, you, do, you do have people who, I, I assume volunteers who come in and they maybe do an art program or a music program or, or something like that. One step further than that, uh, the Eden philosophy of care, uh, we want to treat people as individuals and to challenge them and, and to have them still growing. So we actually have uh, gardening and art and a music therapist and they really are engaging uh, the people in their neighborhoods and in the larger areas so it's not just volunteers but the volunteers um, can do uh, some of the other things and just working with the, with the people but the therapists actually carry out the the programs and uh, that's 
one of the differences um, going forward with the Eden Alternative of Care is to ensuring that we have the therapists and have those professional programs that help the people. You, do you have um, a campaign for recruiting more volunteers? Is there some program you've got going that says? Well, yeah. um, so it's, it's, it's word of mouth, it's talking to the families. A lot of the family members are volunteers because they're there all the time. Um, the bistro and the gift shop have become very, very active and we have, we're been very fortunate to have um, a volunteer coordinator who has recruited her own volunteers to work two shifts or one shift Wednesday through Sunday. They, they open the bistro and the gift shop from 10 till um, noon and, and they go actually, like I said, there'll be two volunteers and they go and get, they go and get residents and bring them into the mm -hmm. bistro. Um, so that was one effort. Um, there's advertising, and there's we're, we're just going on into the community. And this, of course, we're we're always looking for volunteers, and, and to show how rewarding it is to to be a volunteer and to work on special there's special events like we had Johnny Cash come in and sing to the residents. We had a barbecue, and and so we always need volunteers to help with those kinds of activities. Yeah, so that, I mean, that's a good opportunity to. to recruit some volunteers, encourage people to vol come and find out how to volunteer and maybe they have skills that you could use. Well exactly, uh, Rotary was an example. Rotary was not only a donor but they wanted to get some hands-on experience. So one of the projects we did was 27 benches throughout all of the neighborhoods and the open areas and we built the benches and finished them and painted them and installed them and it was hundreds of hours to do, but the Rotarians working together and uh, volunteering, uh, we got them all done in time for opening. Uh, and that would be something that we wouldn't have been able to have done ourselves. They also, the Rotary also helped with the plantings, the gardens, so right. a lot of the, the landscaping what was done, gosh, in February before we moved in. Mm -hmm. um, but, the, we do, but we know we need volunteers. What's interesting, it was a very dry summer and we've got six gardens and a, a beautiful infinity garden with a pool and it's just a gorgeous area but the plants have to be watered <laughs> and what would be great is to get two or three gentlemen or ladies who live nearby who could just spend half a day maybe twice a week in the summer and just come through and water the plants because we have containers all over the place and when you do something like that, not only, not only are you watering, but you're engaging with the people. And you get to know the, some of the characters, and, and they get to know you, and uh, you start talking to them. And it's, it's very, very rewarding to do it. Well, you know, like I, I know I, I, I've gone on about this thing a couple of times. I love your Gary Oak. I mean, I, I think, I don't know what the story is behind it, but uh, I look at that tree, and, and it, it says something to me, and I, but I don't know that I could articulate it. Yeah, well, <laughs> that may be it, but it's a beautiful tree. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, you know, I remember when the construction was going on, it had protection around it so that it couldn't get destroyed, you know. And, and now you, you've taken the people and, and provided them with a similar kind of uh, encompassing, you know. You got the protection. You're inside a, a safe shelter, and uh, you, you've got uh, being supplied things that'll help you grow mm -hmm. just like the plants i guess exactly. you know that's the kind of image i have of yeah. you know of the place you have well, you're welcome to come by and get the hose out yeah anytime <laughs> listen I, I think i could handle that yeah. I, you know I, i'm not the world's greatest gardener uh, he's, it, my wife's a better gardener than i am uh, mind you. I, I tend to be inadvertently a killer i i don't know why but i just don't seem to have that green thumb touch Anyhow, I wanted, to, um, I wanted to talk a bit about what you sort of see or anticipate as future, future growth. I know there's got to be more fundraising. Well, there's a, a little bit of fundraising. Uh, uh, we've talked a little bit about the Eden philosophy of care and the different programs and the therapists we have and, you know, all the flower pots out there and things that we need. And we were fortunate in the major fundraising we were out to raise $2 million. Right. And uh, we did get the million and a half for the capital, so that part's all taken care of. 
and we have started to establish a, a, a pool of monies that will fund these programs as we go forward. So now we're, uh, we just need to add about 100000 a year to keep in perpetuity all the programs going. And uh, we've got lots of people that, who have been touched by dementia and are in a position to make a difference and want to make a difference in the community. So if anyone's been touched by dementia or they've had someone who stayed there, uh, there's a good possibility they're going to step up and make sure the programs keep going. Because you know, something that you, you would mention earlier too, Denise, you seem to have a, well, you know, we're talking about the sort of the awareness of, the, you know, like they used to, was it senility? Right, you know, oh, yeah, I mean, for like 30 it, or 40 years ago, they, people just were senile. They, yeah. they, 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 you didn't talk about dementia as it is. And dementia, I mean, people are understanding, the more you get educated, you know, dementia is just the umbrella for the different types of dementia. There are Alzheimer's and you know, people have dementia for different reasons. Um, and where we are, you see all those different aspects of it. Um, also wanted to talk about the day programs too, so people come in at different stages. So we have, for the community, we have um, daybreak, which is like the first stage if you were you know, diagnosed with dementia, that they would give the family some respite. And then there's stepping stones, which is the second stage. And oftentimes when people are in stepping stones, and this is still a day program, um, they would more than likely c come into um, Eden Gardens as a full-time resident. But all of that is still Island Health mandated. Like, okay. It's not like somebody can ask to come into Eden Gardens. Because I was just wondering, like, who, who would, you know, like if I wanted to sort of, if I suspected I had a relative, you know, and I say, what, could I go someplace to learn about the different developmental stages? Because they might, they might just have a bad memory, you know, right, right. and, and I want to know, or are they suffering from something a little more Certainly serious? You have to go to your doctor and, and to get assessed. And uh, until you've got that assessment, you can't get on the waiting list because we are a not-for-profit, a subsidized facility from Island Health. So in order to get on that list, you have to be assessed. Right. And then when an opening comes available, your name moves up and okay. hopefully you can take it. But one of the challenges of living on this beautiful island is that uh, somehow we all get older and older people move here. Right. Uh, so they estimate that by just 2024, there'll be 5,000 people on the island, just in mid-island here, that over 85 will have dementia. And as a baby boomer, you know, they're talking about one out of five baby boomers being exposed to it. And unfortunately for ladies, you're about twice as likely as men. So we have a lot of people on this island. And one of the challenges is in this area of Nanaimo, Lady Smith, Parksville, there's only a little over 900 subsidized beds for all care. And out of those 900, only about 100, we're 130, yeah. there's maybe 200 beds that are for dementia patients. So there's not a, we are a, not only a specialty for compassionate care dementia, but we're setting the example with the neighborhoods and the Eden philosophy of care, and we hope that there'll be more facilities down the road. So you, th you I mean, so Eden Place could be a model. It is, we're, we really are the, the, the state of the art, and, and we have training rooms in our basement that we hopefully will be able to do training for other homes and other people in the uh, area to advance this concept as well. I think that's it kind of important is, is because, I mean, I, I, I don't know if I'm typical or, or not, but I know I had all kinds of misinformation about Alzheimer's and these things, you know, like, uh, and, you know, what, what would uh, reactions be by people, you know, were they violent, were they this, you know, like, and, and there was no place at that time that I could say, look, look can I go someplace and read a pamphlet at least yeah. or, or talk to somebody? Yeah. Well, certainly the Alzheimer's Society is a good starting point. Yeah. And uh, the internet, there's a lot of information. Yeah. And Island Health has a lot of information on their site too. Well, that's good. I mean, it's just because I think that's important um, from two points of view. I mean, it might, it might uh, direct volunteers to say, hey, I'm, I'm interested in this or I have a family member you know, and, and uh, here's an opportunity for me to, even though they might not be in, 
you know, in residence with you, but they, it's something that person saying, well, maybe I could learn something about how to treat my family member, you know, and that's important. Well, I think the training's important because ignorance is bliss, and yeah. a lot of people are afraid. One, personally, you'll get it, and two, how do you react around people yes. who have dementia? Yeah. So it takes a while to get comfortable and to understand what's, right. what's happening. Yeah. And uh, if we can provide that, that training, and certainly by volunteering, you get that exposure as well. Yeah, because that, that's always the, the thing, you know, like, I mean, that's where, where you get some negativisms and people get a misunderstanding and, uh, you know, because I, I, I mean, I can think of different ailments that have come along in our society over the years and, 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 and there's been such a negative reaction and then suddenly there's a, an opening. People learn the truth about the situation and then sort of things cool down a lot, yeah. Well, it's, it's small things. I mean, I was putting up the uh, the wall that uh, uh, those racks for the simple pleasures, and I had to screw them into the wall. And you're, I could use an extra pair of hands. So one of the residents was watching me. So I said, "Come on over." He came over, and I had him just hold them while I screwed them in. Yes. And then I had said to him, "Where's room 233, the next room?" And he would go and find it for me, and we'd do it. Well, just working with him, and apparently sure. he didn't get along with very many people. But the fact that he was engaged and he was doing something useful, and two days later I was back in to do some more, and he remembered me, which yeah. I found that incredibly rewarding. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's the kind of thing that I, I'm, when you talk about a community, you know, and, and, and people in a village getting along and, and being able to, uh, go into the neighborhood over here or the neighborhood over there and and feel comfortable mm -hmm. because that that I think we don't we don't um, sort of recognize how how much people can feel without words being spoken right. you know and, and the kind of attitudes that happen and that's the kind of thing you see in the in the therapy in the um, art and music and horticulture program so um, there'll be people who can't communicate or they can't um, really express themselves and then when they're with this music therapist they just come to life. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Or if you put a, a hose in their hand of somebody who had, hadn't been doing anything and then all of a sudden they remember gardening or you know mm -hmm. they're digging and they're, you, you bring back their dignity and, and, and a little bit back of what they were. You know. And that's, that's important. I mean, I think, um, you know, we, we write people off too fast sometimes in our society, you know, and then we used to talk about the disposable human being, you know, and I mean, we've got enough things we dispose of carelessly, you know, and I think that it's, it's nice that the Eden Place, is the philosophy you've got, I mean, I, maybe you could give me a little more detail about that philosophy. The philosophy? Yeah. Well, it's, it's a little bit... Uh, uh, number one, treating it like a home-like setting. And to treat people as, as uh, individuals, we want to put some spontaneity and some variety um, into their life. And we want them to be engaged and to have a sense of dignity. It's pretty easy at that point not to treat people with dignity, as you say, to, to write them off. And they, they still have a life to live. They still have uh, things that they can, they can do. And... Uh, uh, exposing them to new things is amazing. The, the art program, uh, I remember we had one chap who had never painted in his life. And he started to paint, and he actually got pretty good. And we ended up doing cards with his painting uh, 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 going out. So if people are challenged, um, the three curses of dementia are loneliness, helplessness, and boredom. And that's what these programs fight. Because I think, I mean, like, I, when I think of uh, the structure, you yeah, have the physical structure, mm -hmm. and, and when, Denise, you were talking about the uh, uh, neighborhood concept, you see, that, that allows people to experience different ex things, you know, and then it's not the same routine, because that could be boring as hell, yeah. you know. If you, if, you know, you get up, you go there, you go there, and then it's, you know, it, well, it's we have nice. The beast, have we have the bistro now, and the bistro oh, yeah? is becoming a central spot where you come down, 
and you can sit with mom and have a cup of tea and some stuff and a little bit of food. If it's a nice day, they can go straight outside to the garden underneath the, 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 uh, the tents okay. and, uh, and, and back and forth. And adjacent to the bistro, we have a gift store okay. where mom can go in and pick out some new clothes or they can shop together and uh, uh, do some things. Also, oh, it's not just uh, flowers and toys. Okay, you were going to say something. I, I, I also want to give kudos to the staff too mm -hmm. because they're some of the most amazing people. I mean, if you can imagine caring for these people who need constant care, need to be fed and dressed and bathed and toileted like yeah. several times a day. You know, it's just amazing how much patience and, and kindness there is in Eden Gardens. Mm -hmm. They really, um, yeah, I, like, I, like it, it means a lot. And they've yeah. all gone through the Eden philosophy training and, and it, it's, it's, that's really important as well, right? That everybody's knitted together. Of course, you know, there's a few, but it's, it, it is, it is a wonderful place too. I mean, I, I think that, that we're lucky to have a facility like Eden Place in our community. You know, I mean, I'm sure there are other facilities, you know, like, there, you know, I know the, the, I know I've, the hospital settings, I've yeah. seen them, uh, you know, gone in, but, but when I think of the, the care and the thought process that's gone into establishing it, and because, and, I, and I, as I said earlier, I have a bit of an advantage of having gone through the building while it was under construction and seeing, uh, like, the beams. Yes. You know, they could have been covered over with plasterboard. But instead, you know, they, they're left open and they offer a warmth to the whole facility. Yeah. You know, there's a full, I can tell you a full circle story. One of our volunteers, his mother, was in the residence for a number of years and she passed away. And uh, he's a, a musician. And he has come for the last two or three years, every second week from Vancouver, over on the ferry, to play the music for the residents. Uh -oh. And he's the one that says, he calls the staff, they're all angels. Ah. They're all angels. Well, I'm afraid we've come to the end of our time. But, uh, I think that it's important, that what we've discussed today is important, and I think I'm hoping the viewers will, you know, take heed of uh, the opportunity to become a volunteer. I'd like yeah, to thank you guys. That. Thank you. And if, if the visitors, if they would go to www.edengardens.ca, mm -hmm. they can learn more about it, and there's a spot to donate, and you can see about volunteering as well. Well, thank you very much, and look up the website. Maybe you could be a volunteer.